Hey, welcome back to another authentic video. Not to say that the previous videos I've made were fake. Eh? Ah? Uh, ah? Uh, see what I did there? Anyways, in this video I'll show you how to set up the enrollment and enrollment invitation flows. And just like my previous video on password recovery, this video assumes that you have authentic and your email configuration up and running. Okay, first let's go ahead and log into our dashboard. Next, go ahead and click on your admin interface. Click on directory, groups, and click on create. For the name, I will set up a user group. So I will name this authentic users. And obviously since these will be normal users, uh, I will not check this super user option. And I'll just go ahead and click on create. Okay, now let's click on flows and stages. Click on stages and then create. And here we'll want to make an email stage. Click on email stage. Click next. And for name, I will name this email account confirmation. Scroll down for subject. I will put account confirmation and the template you want to use is account confirmation and click on finish. Next you want to click on flows and click on create and for the name I will enter main page enrollment. For my title, I will name it Enrollment. And for my slug, also Enrollment. For designation, I will choose Enrollment. For sake of anyone that uses password managers, I will go ahead and click on Compatibility Mode also. And click on Create. Now you want to go ahead and click on the Enrollment flow that we just created. Click on stage bindings, click on bind stage. For stage, we want to go ahead and choose prompt stage and choose default source enrollment prompt. For order, I'll put a value of 10 and click create. Now we want to edit the stage. For fields, you want to go ahead and choose user name, name, email, password, and password repeat. For validation policies, I will choose password complexity, the same that I created for my previous video, and click update. Now we want to click bind stage again. For stage, we want to go down to user write stage and choose the default source enrollment write. You're going to want to increment your order, so I'll go ahead and enter a value of 20 and click create. Now you want to go ahead and edit this stage as well. So click edit stage. Go ahead and check the box for create users as inactive. The reason we're doing this is because we want the users to go ahead and enter their information, but their accounts not be active until they're confirmed uh, via email. And under group, I'm going to go ahead and choose authentic users, the group that I created earlier and click update. Next, we want to go ahead and click bind stage again. And for stage, we'll want to go ahead and choose our email account confirmation we created earlier. Increment your order. And click on create. Now we want to go ahead and edit the email stage. Okay, make sure you have activate pending user on success checked as well as use global settings. If you don't have your email configuration set up in your Docker Compose and environmental variables, you want to go ahead and uncheck this and manually enter it in the connection settings. For instance, down here where it says connection settings, you'd go ahead and enter your SMTP host, SMTP port, your username, and login for your mail account. But once again, my email settings are in my Docker Compose and environmental file, so I'll go ahead and use the global settings. All right, make sure subject is account confirmation and the template is account confirmation and click on update. 
From here, we want to go ahead and click on Flows and click on Default Authentication Flow. Go ahead and click on Stage Bindings. And we're going to go ahead and edit the stage for the default authentication identification. In here, we want to go ahead and scroll all the way down to the bottom and expand the flow settings. Scroll down some more. And in Enrollment Flow, go ahead and choose the main page enrollment we created earlier. And click Update. Now we can check this is all set up correctly by launching an incognito or private window and navigating to the Authentic Dashboard. And as you can see, we now have a needed an account sign-up link right here on the main page underneath the login prompt. Let's go ahead and test it out by clicking Sign Up. Now the enrollment form has popped up. Let's go ahead and enter some user's information. And click Continue. So let's check our mailbox and wait for that account confirmation to come through. And there it is. Let's go ahead and click that and see what it says. Okay, great. It says, welcome. We're excited to have you get started. First, you need to confirm your account. Just press the button below. So we'll go ahead and click on this confirm account button. And it throws us back to the main login page. Now our user's information should be written into Authentic and we should be able to log in with the user information that we entered earlier. So let me go ahead and enter our user's information into the login prompt. And click login. As you can see, we successfully authenticated and we're in Authentic's dashboard interface. Now let's say you don't want just any old body to sign up on the main page and enroll themselves into Authentic. Well, you can instead send out an invitation to either a single user or you can mass email a invitation out to several people. So let me go ahead and show you how to set up the invitation. Under Flows and Stages, go ahead and click on Stages and click on Create. Scroll down to User Right Stage and select it. Click Next. For the name, I'm going to go ahead and enter Enrollment Invitation Rights. Since you know the users that you want enrolled, you can go ahead and uncheck the Create Users as Inactive. For Group, go ahead and select Authentic Users or whatever group you created for your users to enroll into. And click Finish. Then click on Create. And choose Invitation Stage and click Next. For the name, I'm going to go ahead and name this Enrollment Invitation. Go ahead and uncheck the option to continue flow without invitation. And click Finish. Next, click on Flows. Then Create. For the name, I'm going to go ahead and name this Enrollment Invitation. My title will also be Enrollment Invitation and my slug will be Enrollment Invitation. For a designation, go ahead and choose Enrollment. Again, for anybody that may be using password managers, you want to go ahead and click the Compatibility mode and click Create. Now we want to click the Enrollment Invitation flow we just created. Go ahead and click on Stage Bindings. Now click on Bind Stage. For stage, you want to go ahead and click on Enrollment Invitation. And now go ahead and put a starting value for your order. Click Create. Again, click Bind Stage. For stage, go ahead and scroll down to Prompt Stage and choose the Default Source Enrollment Prompt. Go ahead and increment your order. And click Create. Now we want to go ahead and click Edit Stage for Default Source Enrollment Prompt. And be sure Username, Name, Email, Password, and Password Repeat are selected. And go ahead and choose your Validation Policy for your password if you have one. And click Update. Once more, click Bind Stage. 
Under stage, we want to go ahead and scroll down to the user right stage section and choose enrollment invitation right. We want to also go ahead and increment our order one more time and click create. Now we want to go ahead and click bind stage one last time. This time we're going to go scroll down to the user login stage section and choose the default source enrollment. Again, increment your order and click create. We are now done with our enrollment invitation flow. So under directory, we want to go ahead and click on invitations and click create. Go ahead and enter a name for your invitation. I'll simply name mine enrollment invitation link. Under expires, you want to choose how long you want your invitation link to be valid for. So go ahead and click the calendar icon to the far right and just pick a calendar day and a time. For instance, I want my link to be valid for 24 hours, so I'll just pick the very next day and click anywhere else to close the calendar. For the option for single use, you want to go ahead and keep this checked if you're sending it out to an individual. Now, if you're sending a mass email, you want to go ahead and uncheck this so that the link will remain valid for all users. So I'll go ahead and uncheck it for my scenario and click create. Now go ahead and click the arrow next to your enrollment invitation link to expand it. Be sure your enrollment invitation flow is selected. And now you can see it provides a link that you can copy and paste into the email that you want to send to your users to enroll with. Now to test this, I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this into a private or incognito window and test it that way. And as you can see, the enrollment invitation flow started up and it's allowing us to enter our user's information. So let's go ahead and enter some information in and click continue. Now it's brought us back to the main login page. So let's go ahead and enter our user's information in and see if we can log in and click login. And again, we've successfully authenticated and are now logged into the authentic dashboard. Bonus tip, now say you want to go ahead and cut off enrollment for everybody. Well, we just have to create a deny stage. So now just go ahead and click on flows and stages, click on stages and create and click on deny stage and click next. Go ahead and enter a name for your deny stage. I'm going to go ahead and name mine deny enrollment and click finish. Now all you need to do is go ahead and click on your flows and click on your enrollment flow. Go to stage bindings. And here you want to go ahead and bind the stage. And now you want to go ahead and choose your deny stage enrollment. And for order, you want to go ahead and make sure this is at the top of the list. So I'll go ahead and put zero and click create. Now let's go ahead and test this by opening up an incognito window and navigating to the login page. From the login page, I'm going to go ahead and click on sign up and we should be denied. And as you can see, we definitely were denied. Enrollment says request has been denied. Now for me, this is the quick and easy way to do it. However, I'm sure there's a bunch of you out there that can probably do all kinds of crazy fancy stuff with the policies. But hey, this gets the job done. I hope you enjoyed the video and that it helps anyone out there struggling with the enrollment setup. And if this video did help you, please click that like button and subscribe. Once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.